Randy, getting back to uh, Tom Brady and Giselle Bunchen, we don't know anything about their particular situation. We're not representing them. We have no confidential information. But what what may interest some people is the fact that we're talking about parenting time for two child, two children, plus a child from another marriage or relationship, excuse me. So we've got, be clear. this is for example purposes only because there are a lot of yeah. people in that situation. All right. But it did, whether you're a celebrity or not, the big issue that I think you and I would probably agree we didn't anticipate to be this to be such a family law problem 20 years ago that it is today. And that's the blended family where you've got multiple relationships, different parents. And I would assume for purposes of discussion, they're normal people for this parenting time difficulty. We're, other than the fact that during the season, Tom Brady's got to be somewhere. Uh, maybe, uh, uh, if your mom's a, not a model, she's got to go to Cannes or Paris for, a, you know, and make a million dollars for 10 minutes of work. Now, of course, it may take a little more than 10 minutes or, or 10 million for 10 minutes of work. You got you still, she's still got to show up places and there's got to be somebody to take care of the kids. So I guess my question to you is what, what do you think would surprise most people about high-profile, celebrity, ultra-wealthy parents who get divorced and have to deal with uh, parenting time difficulties? So I don't know if either of these things would surprise people because as soon as I say them, you'll say that makes sense. But there are two things. One is they're like everybody else. And unfortunately, someone comes into the marriage with a child, the new spouse treats that child like their own. And when they get divorced, the, original, the other spouse says, you know what, do not leave me the father or the mother. I'm not going to let the court include them in the discussion. And that's just terrible. And that happens. It happens. It happens. It happens. And it's, to me, it's terrible. The other thing is sometimes it's not about who's a better parent. We know the standard in most states is not which parent is better. It's what's in the children's best interest. But, in, you know, a lot of people say, well, the judge is going to figure out who's the better parent and give that parent custody. In these kind of cases, often it's about who manages the nannies better, right? Who can provide the best situation for the children because you might be a terrible parent. But if both of you are gone all the time, then who is better capable of setting up a situation where the children can thrive, can see both parents? So it's who's more organized sometimes, who's you know thoughtful and figured out what is the best environment for children that have two parents that are in Brazil and France and and Boston and wherever, you know, because that's a unique situation. It's not a stay-at-home parent versus a traveling salesperson. It's two parents that are on the road a lot. And the most stable person in those children's lives might be the nanny. And if somebody says, well, I'm going to fire that nanny because she's not the other parent, the judge might say, is that what's good for the kids? Judges might recognize that someone who's putting their kids first is saying these kids have grown to love the nanny or grandma. And I don't care if it's his mom or her mom. If I'm the parent and says the kids love being with grandma, I want grandma to be involved no matter who's got custody. That person probably will be awarded primary custody, all things being equal. But those are the tougher situations. It's a lot deeper than who's got the best home, who's nicer, who drives the kids to school, who cooks breakfast. Because in those situations, there, there may be chefs cooking breakfast. There may be nannies driving them to school. There may be there are, the kids may have their own personal driver. It's just uh, it's bizarre to think about. Yeah. You know, it takes some, some thoughtful consideration if you're going to be in front of a judge to say, judge, you're not going to get to really figure out who's the better parent. You're going to figure out who's more capable of doing what's best for the kids. It's a, it's a different kind of case. One of the angles I try to hit early in the process is getting my parent to think in terms of sharing the Christmas holidays. Because what I find is pe people with that are affluent, they want to go somewhere exotic, interesting, and fabulous. It makes me personally very jealous. I'll, I'll say, <laughs> you know, we want an authentic uh, Christmas in Austria this year. Well, but that's where our regular people problems come in. And then we have to, well, let's, let's, let's trade the ability to take the children to Austria this year for the next two Christmases. 
if have you run into that situation where you're able to uh, horse trade long trips, exotic trips? I've seen everything, right? So have you. I've seen where the most important holiday to one parent was Halloween because that parent just loved <laughs> the dressing up and the being with it and, and just came up with where the result it is that even when the other parent has Halloween, both parents have a chance to be with the children and, and dress up, and, you know. So we see it all and it's it's sort of in a, in a strange, maybe bad way, fun because it, it challenges us to think outside the box what can you do? You know, maybe for some families, Christmas, even though it's supposed to be December 25th, technically in one part of the world, it might be December 25th while somewhere else it's December 24th. So the children can have two December 25th or they can have <laughs> Christmas on the 26th with one parent. Um, we, you know, we see all that kind of stuff and, and good for the kids to get to have two great holidays if, if both parents can make it special. And of course, you and I have seen in celebrity and non-celebrity cases, the parents that actually find a way to be together on the one holiday that's really important to their family. And, they, and, um, and sometimes it's the in-laws. You know, the in-laws, you know, one, one celebrity's in-laws get to meet the other celebrity's in-laws, and they get to be friendly because they have something in common. Their kids became famous, and they had to deal with it late in life. Um, and they want to see each other, you know, so we see it all and it's uh it's fun no case is the same every case is different and uh that that's the challenge that i enjoy